Today, new credit is down and building approvals are down. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. One that is post covering finance and problems with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, yesterday we got more information from the ABS relating both to new lending and also to building construction and approvals. And in September 2022, in seasonally adjusted terms, the value of new loan commitments for total housing, they said, fell 8.2% to $25.1 billion after a fall of 3.4% in August. For owner-occupied housing, it fell 9.3% to $16.8 billion after a fall of 2.7% in August, but remains 23.2% higher than the pre-pandemic level seen back in February 2020. For investor housing, it fell 6% to $8.3 billion after a fall of 4.8% in August, but still remains 59.8% higher than the pre-pandemic level seen in February 2020. So the point here is that the momentum for new lending is falling through the floor. In September 2022, in season-adjusted terms for owner-occupier housing, the value of new known commitments for the purchase of existing dwellings fell 8.7% and was 20.4% lower compared to a year ago. For the construction of new dwellings, it fell 12.4% and was 12.9% lower than a year ago. And for the purchase of new dwellings, it fell 6% and was 31% lower compared to a year ago. And in September 2022, in season adjusted terms for owner occupier housing, the value of new loan commitments in Victoria fell 10.4%. In Queensland, it fell 13.8%. In New South Wales, it fell 5.9%. In Western Australia, it fell 13.2%. In South Australia, it fell 7%. In the ACT, it fell 8.9%. And the Northern Territory, it fell 25.2%. And in Tasmania, it dropped 10.4%. And also, interestingly, in September 2022, in original terms, the average loan size for owner-occupied dwellings, including construction, the purchase of new dwellings and existing dwellings, fell slightly at the national level from $589,000 to $588,000. And there were actually mixed movements across the states and territories in New South Wales, though, is a standout with significant falls. In September 2022, in season adjusted terms for investor housing, the value of new loan commitments in New South Wales fell 8.3%. In Western Australia, it fell 8.7%. In Queensland, it fell 3%. In Victoria, it fell 1.7%. In Tasmania, it fell 26.6%. And in the ACT, it fell 12.2%. While in South Australia, it fell 1.3%. And in the Northern Territory, which of course is a smaller and volatile series, it rose 20.6%. Looking at external refinancing in September 2022, again in season-adjusted terms, for total housing, refinancing fell 8.2%, but was still 7.4% higher compared to a year ago. And within that, owner-occupied housing fell 7.2% to $11.9 billion, after rising 2.8% to an all-time high of $12.8 billion in August, while for investor housing it fell 2.3% and was 6.3% lower compared to a year ago. And in terms of funding, the value of new variable loan rate commitments funded in the month fell 9.3%. And the value of new variable loan commitments to first-home buyers funded in the month fell 5.1%. And the value of new fixed loan commitments funded in the month fell 18.2%. While the value of new fixed rate commitments for first-home buyers funded in the month fell 26.4%. And in September 2022, in season adjusted terms for owner-occupier first home buyers, the number of loan commitments at the national level fell 8.3% to 8,485 after a rise of 10.4% in August. The September level was 48% below the January 2021 high of 16,330 when government stimulus was really flowing. In Queensland, there were falls of 12.3%. In Western Australia, it fell 15.6%. In Victoria, there was a fall of 6.8%. In New South Wales, there was a fall of 7.8%. In Tasmania, it fell by 31%. And in South Australia, it fell 8%. And in the ACT, it fell 9.4%. And in the Northern Territory, it was the same as the previous month, but again, a very small count. 
just looking quickly at personal finance in September, in season just determines the value of new loan commitments for fixed term purchases fell 5.2% after a rise of 9.5% in August. For road vehicles, it fell 6.8% after a rise of 17.7% in August. And for personal investment, it fell 10% after a fall of 7.6% in August. And looking at business finance, in September 2022, in season adjusted terms, the value of new loan commitments for construction finance fell 36.6% after a rise of 51.7% in August. And for the purchase of property, it fell 12.1% after a fall of 23.6% in August. So you can see here the impact of the rising interest rates and the tighter lending standards. People are getting smaller loans if they can get them at all, and less people are getting new loans. But of course, refinancing is still quite strong. But even there, many people are now finding that actually the benefit of refinancing is being squeezed. So expect to see more falls ahead. That will have a significant knock on in terms of probably the banks, of course. But it also puts some pressure on the banks trying to attract refinancing from one to the other. So expect more discounts there. And also the ABS released data on dwelling approvals. It fell 5.8% in September in season adjusted terms. That followed a 23.1% increase in August, according to the ABS. The fall in approvals were driven by private sector houses, which declined 7.8%. And approvals for private sector dwellings, excluding housing, fell 1.8%. But of course, that's more volatile, as I've explained before. Across Australia, total dwelling approvals fell in South Australia, down 19.7%. Tasmania, down 10.8%. Western Australia, down 9.3%. New South Wales, down 8.8%. And Queensland, down 6.2%. Victoria was the only state to record an increase, rising 3.4%. And approvals for private sector houses fell in all states, with Western Australia down 11.4%, Queensland down 8.6%, New South Wales down 7.9%, Victoria down 4.7%, and South Australia down 4.3%. And the total value of building approvals fell 6.9% in September, following a 19.5% rise in August. So clearly there's more bad news here with regard to momentum in the economy. And uh, we would expect to see more falls ahead as well. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultant standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high. Price discovery and price transparency are hard to find. And then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.